Hello and welcome to Connected at Lunch. Today, Paul Plant gives us some hot landscaping tips for your home garden. Three visiting US academics join us to discuss their collaboration with USQ faculty on how to educate tomorrow's health and medical practitioners. We'll also get you connected with some local events around the area and get the latest news from the Queensland Times as well. But first, Paul Plant from Subtropical Magazine has some advice on how easy it is for you to landscape your own backyard. As trees grow, they produce space and shade beneath them. For a landscape designer, the options are build an entertainment area or utilise plants to create a living palette, which is also very low in maintenance. The good thing with the subtropical climate is that there's a wide range of flowering shrubs, ground covers and creepers which do very well in this situation. We're going to have a look at some of these right now. If you want to reduce maintenance in your garden, one of the best things you can do with these canopy trees is to underplant them with shrubs. In this situation we've got the pink tropper tree which becomes deciduous once a year. Underneath we've got the philodendrons and the hawthorn. Now what happens at deciduous time is the leaves fall down through the shrubs onto the soil and become a natural mulch and that's free from the tree above. The secret for success here is to identify what the canopy spread of the tree is and plant out as far as possible to that drip line. That means whenever the leaves fall, it goes straight down to the soil. When you have a dense shady tree that casts dark shade, the important thing is to select plants that are hardy in these low light situations. Generally, they're tough, foliage plants. Flowers are not that important, it's actually the foliage and the plant itself that is more important and selecting these plants is paramount. With a lot of these shady trees they have surface roots which means they're relatively close to the surface of the soil so the selection of the plants is a lot less. A good option when you have a good mulch layer are bromeliads and also a whole range of creepers. Always aim to keep the theme of the garden design in harmony. With tropical large shrubs and trees, use understory plants such as gingers, heliconias, costos and crotons. If you have a water-wise garden, select succulents that are appropriate for our climate. If you love our native plants, the good news is there are many species great for this purpose. If you are lucky to have a gully or a cool, damp side of the house, consider using ferns as understory plants. The subtropical climate we have provides us with many species including the impressive crow's nest ferns, staghorn ferns and more. Perhaps one important element to landscape design is the saying, less is more. There may be situations in your garden when all you want is to look under the canopy of a tree to see the view in the distance, the limbs framing a view. Keep planting to a minimum and sometimes even turf may be all that is needed. Great advice, less is more. Well, if you want your local advice for your garden, you can check out Paul's page, stgmagazine.com.au. Now, let's get you connected with some great events around the region. Tonight and every other Wednesday from 7.30pm till 9pm, you can swing by to Harry's Trivia at Hotel Metropole in the corner of Waghorn and Brisbane Street in Ipswich. Harry's Trivia is a fun night out, it runs at a good pace, suitable for all ages, and it's a licensed venue where they've written and hosted over 5,000 shows. They're also giving away over a million dollars in cash and prizes. Bring your friends, workmates and family to come see why Harry's Trivia is Brisbane's number one trivia experience. Also, at the Ipswich Civic Centre located on 50 Nicholas Street in North Ipswich from the 13th of July to the 15th, you can come and see Hairspray, the Broadway musical performed by St Mary's College and St Edmunds College who have a long tradition of producing excellent combined musicals over the past 20 years. Hairspray is set in the early 1960s full of fun, fashion and dancing. It's $25 for adults and $15 for students and children. There's some great events there, isn't it? Well, three leading academics from the University of California Riverside School of Medicine are currently in Australia working alongside faculty from the University of Southern Queensland. At the heart of this collaboration is better understanding between education and health and medicine. 
engagement with rural areas of the community and strategies for preventing mental illness. Joining us on Connected at Lunch today is Kendrick Davis, Associate Dean for Assessment and Evaluation, Emma Gerard, who is an Assistant Clinical Professor of Psychiatry, and Jerry Maguire, MD, Professor and Chair in Psychiatry and Neuroscience, and Associate Dean of Graduate Medical Education at the University of California, Riverside School of Medicine. Folks, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Jerry, yeah. the collaboration that you have with the School of Teacher Education, Early Childhood and yourselves, right. what do you see are the strengths and benefits of this well, joint venture? The, uh, the strengths of this joint venture is to take what has been done here at USQ mm -hmm. and bring that over to our rural regions of inland, of inland southern, southern California in mm -hmm. telehealth technologies, for instance, and we're reaching out to schools and the communities. We treat and take care of similar communities. We have a large indigenous population, as you do, areas which have poor access to care. And utilizing what's been done here at USQ and bringing that, uh, those techniques, that technology, that understanding to help the needs of inland southern, southern California. So a two-way street, I would imagine, yeah. too, because you'd be able to impart some of your knowledge yeah, exactly. and experiences. Right. Yeah, That's exactly. That's great. Now, Kendrick, how important is uh, the, uh, the university education process in finding tomorrow's health practitioners? It's vital. When you think about we have it at the University of Southern California, Riverside, pipeline programs where we reach back to the community. So when you think about the education touching the community, it, it begins with identifying the talent, mm -hmm. recruiting the talent, bringing the talent on campus where you're giving them exposure and access and partnering with USQ allows us to use things like telehealth, like Jerry was re mentioning, wherein now you're able to reach the community even ro remote and rurally in a variety of ways. And so having that expertise, those subject matter experts, literally leading that effort is, is what's critical to what we're doing. Now you mentioned the remoteness. Emma, this is one of your areas because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know it, but Australia is more than 4,000 kilometers yes. wide. We have a lot of rural and remote areas. Uh, what, what processes and, and uh, discussions are going in, in place of that? Absolutely. So one of the things that we've done in our collaboration is we actually have caravans that go out to remote areas, um, but that only reaches a tiny percentage of the people needing access to services. So as even though as that was innovative, what telehealth can do is open up a whole um, caveat of services, um, and we wouldn't then be limited by only certain days of the week or, or mobile breakdowns or things like that. Yeah. Um, and using school systems as a hub, um, since families are familiar with schools, it's a location that they already go to, and using that as a portal to gain access. Now, telehealth, we must point out what that is, and that's yes. actually using modern day technology to reach out into those remote areas, isn't it? That's absolutely correct. Yeah, so we're going to be using things like the internet, I guess, and, and Zoom platforms or uh, live streams to be able to access those areas. Absolutely, and then using the school system as the home base for those so that the infrastructure can be taken care of and families can reach that school center and then telehealth medicine, whether it be educational or medical or mental health, can all have access to those families. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, Jerry, of course, yes, one in four right. people worldwide uh, actually is affected by uh, mental or neurological uh, disorders. Uh, are we closer to prevention or, or at least finding out some of the symptoms to look out for? Correct, yeah, we are. Uh, the key is, uh, is recognizing it's so yeah. often in psychiatric care, we wait till the mm -hmm. disorder hits and then we treat it essentially after the fact, after mm -hmm. the damage is done. So our, our goal is to uh, identify those at-risk youth, mm -hmm. do intervention strategies early on to hopefully prevent the mental illness from coming on or at least not being as severe as it is. And of course, prevention is always better than cure after the fact, isn't Absolutely, it? and also earlier treatment is better than treatment late, later on. Every disorder, the earlier you get it, just like with diabetes, uh, the treatments mm -hmm. earlier on have better outcomes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's tremendous work that you and the uh, faculty uh, of the School of Teacher Education and Early Childhood are doing at U USQ as well. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us on Thank the program you. and all the very best for your continued time here in Australia. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And of course, uh, you can get a lot of updates by checking out usq.edu.au for all of the information on this program. Now it's time to check the latest in local news. It's over to the Queensland Times newsroom. In shocking news, a young takeaway worker was stabbed in an alleged attempt armed robbery overnight. The 25-year-old victim was rushed to hospital with serious wounds to his arm after a man armed with a knife demanded cash while a second man kept watch outside. A physical altercation has then allegedly occurred at the Leichhardt store before two men fled the scene. 
A 30-year-old from Goodna and a 27-year-old man from Leichhardt will appear in Ipswich Court tomorrow. In other news, Council has revealed the reason why demolition works in the Ipswich CBD have been delayed. Acting Mayor Paul Tully said there was an issue with Queensland Rail infrastructure. He said authorities needed to ensure the weight of machinery used in the demolition works did not impact the rail tunnel underneath the CBD. The issue is expected to be resolved in the coming weeks. To business news now and chaos marked the first day of an iconic Ipswich jewellery store's closing down sale. A long line of eager customers queued outside Beval Hourglass Jewellers yesterday waiting for doors to open. Jewellery was discounted up to 60% and owner Shelley Fox, who recently announced the store would be closing for good, said the response from customers was unreal. The store is preparing for another busy day today and have fully restocked the shelves. Back to you in the studio. And thanks to the newsroom for that. To keep up to date with the latest news that matters, become a subscriber of the Queensland Times by visiting qt.com.au. Coming up on the show tomorrow, we'll showcase some of the great upcoming blockbusters headed our way at Limelight Cinemas. The end of the financial year is upon us and we'll give you some tips and tricks to get yourself organised. Be sure to keep up to date with us, us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash phoenixmediahub. Until tomorrow, keep connected and bye for now.